Bien le bonjour and welcome to this special video to celebrate getting over 500 YouTube subscribers on my French channel and 200 on the English one. I know that in this day and age it's barely a droplet in the internet ocean, but from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And sorry again for the humptieth time for being so slow with my content. After a conversation on the Discord server, I got the idea of a more personal video to show you my collection of physical Final Fantasy medias. If people are interested, I can do more videos to talk about the other games I own. But I already have a lot of things to show in this one, so we'll see. In any case, I also have other types of special videos I plan on doing once I get over 500 on the English channel, or a thousand on the French one, or both. I don't really like to talk about myself in general, which sounds weird considering the video I'm currently making, but I felt like I needed to give some context. I think I can call myself a pragmatic or practical person. What I mean by that is I don't like collecting trinkets just because they're pretty. When I buy something, I want to use it, like a video game or a book. All I want to say is that you will not see statues or small replicas, but mostly physical copies of games. This warning also applies to the rest of my collection, not just Final Fantasy, but I'll repeat that if I do other videos on this topic. Keep in mind that unless specified or really obvious, these are all French or European PAL copies. But enough with that intro, let's start! Considering that Nintendo sold their games in cardboard boxes up until the GameCube, I never bothered to search for complete copies and just aimed for the Famicom cartridge. Cardboard tends to deteriorate far too easily over time, though I admit that I should have at least tried to search for the booklets on their own as well. Same stuff for FF2 and 3 by the way, I think I bought them all really cheap from the same reseller on a site. It would be nice if I could get my hands on a US NES cartridge, but I'm not made of money. I'm actually scared to look at the prices for the PS1 compilation Origins, but that's not a priority at all to me. Dawn of Souls, why not? But my favorite version of FF1 and 2 still is the PSP1, which I fortunately have. Original edition with the booklet and the game, of course. Like the first, I have the Famicom cartridge and a complete version of the PSP remake, but in the PSP Essentials edition. At the very least, there's the booklet and the game inside, so it's not the end of the world. Famicom cartridge, but I have the Steam version of the 3D remake, so I can't show that with my hands. I'm not interested in a DS copy of the 3D remake, because even if I can play it with my 3DS, there's a side content that's locked forever now, as you needed to use something called a Mognet that went through the Nintendo Wi-Fi service, which closed in 2014. The Steam version doesn't have that issue, because you can unlock that side content even if you're in the Steam offline mode. You get why this DS copy is the lowest of the lowest of the lowest of my priority, unless I become filthy rich, but whatever. In this case, I couldn't resist the really affordable price I saw for this complete Japanese copy. You can see that the box has seen better days, so I avoid opening it constantly for no reason but I took some photos to show you its content. I'm always surprised to see that Edward's original name was Gilbert or Gilbart. I think it's because of the character's limitation to only six and Gilbert had seven while Edward only had six. As opposed to FF3, I would like to obtain a copy of the DS version, since it has some exclusive content relying on the touchscreen that was cut from the Steam version. 
So if I ever need to cover these in my videos, I must have a copy ready. At the very least, I could try to look for just the cartridge without the box. Anyway, this is one of my top priorities. I have an Essentials edition of the PSP version. Even if this is my favorite version of the game, I can't help but feel angry at my past self, because I held a collector's edition copy in my very hands many years ago. I found it in the used games section of a video game store for very cheap, and not buying it then is one of my biggest regrets. At least I have the booklet in my essentials copy. I also had, a long time ago, the European Anthology compilation on PS1 that contained FF4 and 5, but I'm really not missing the horrendous CGI openings and endings, so I'm ignoring them. Um, uh, I have the GBA cartridge. Yep, that's all I have to say, no particular anecdote, I found it really cheap on a site. First misadventure with buying through the internet. The copy that you see was advertised as a French edition, but no, it's a British one. Sure, you can argue that there wasn't a French localization until the GBA version, which I own a copy of like FF5, but the small sticker, the back of the box and the booklet were in French. I remember it perfectly, as I had it a long time ago, but like other games, I resold it. And as you can clearly see here, everything is in English, booklet included. This was mostly my fault, I admit that, I should have looked at the pictures more carefully before buying it. But that's life, and I also have it in digital form on my PS3. I think I bought and sold this game four or five times before definitely keeping this copy. Unfortunately, its previous owner wasn't really careful as you can see, and the CDs tend to be shaken around in the box. The first and second CDs are the most damaged, but the FF8 demo and the third CDs are very likely still readable as their fixations are far sturdier. What a shame. You probably noticed that this booklet doesn't have the Platinum logo. Well, I kept that one from a prior game copy and this one didn't have a booklet, so I created a Chimera. Before I talk about the next thing, let me tell you a story that happened to me regarding one of the prior copies I bought back in 2001 or 2002. One day, as I was looking through the shelves of a video game store, I saw a copy of FF7 for 27 euros. I even think it was brand new. I already finished the game once or twice and sold my first copy. But since I was missing the game, I wanted to buy that new copy, so I asked a free store clerk and I ended up chatting a bit about how I loved the series and also regretted selling my previous copy. He then took it out of the locked display and I was sure I had the right amount on me. But after looking everywhere through my pockets, I realized that I was only 20 or 10 cents short. Like, really, really close. I could have gone back to my house and begged my father to give me those few cents missing. But at that moment, I was really bummed out. As I was about to tell to the second store clerk behind the register that I'll come back later or another day, the first clerk held those last cents in my direction. At first, I really didn't understand why he was holding those coins like this, but without a word, he gestured towards me like, go on, take them. I refused, of course, adding that I could come back later, but he said, For a few cents, come on kid, have fun, I saw that you really love these games. The second clerk praised him, or sarcastically made fun of his sudden burst of generosity. Then after finally paying for the game, I went on my merry way home. I'm sure you won't see this video, even the French version, or might not even remember that day. 
But you, sir, were truly a hero to that kid. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. The story could have ended here, but I'm the unlucky type. Nothing horrible, don't worry, but that was one insane coincidence. Not too far from my house, I wanted to cross the street a bit too hurriedly, because despite the crossing light being red, there was no car. Except that when I tried to cross over, a moped arrived really fast and had to violently brake because of me. Like a little asshole, I think I cursed at the moped guy, and once I finished crossing, I realized that this guy might have actually been the store clerk that gave me those last cents. He was wearing a helmet, but for the few seconds I could observe his clothes, they were the same. If that was really the case, well, I'm truly sorry, sir, if you watched this video or the French version. I was the one at fault here. And I'm done with my anecdote. This isn't the original copy I played a long time ago, I'm just gonna say that this one is at least complete, even though the small clasp on top doesn't close. I don't know if I should try to get a British copy, or if I just stick to French footage with translation for my videos, but that's not one of my priorities. I bought the movie soundtrack quite some time ago from a store in Paris specialized in importing merchandise from Japan. I watched the movie at a friend's house, but it was only at the beginning of 2023, so a few months before this video, that I considered actually buying the Final Fantasy movies. So I ended up finding not only the special 2 DVD edition, but also the Blu-ray. And I still haven't watched that extended cut, the one my friend showed me was the short version before Square decided to add new scenes. There's the booklet and the CD, all in good shape. I honestly have nothing else to add. The previous owner took better care of this copy apparently, since both sides don't come off and the third CD is still holding on. As opposed to my FF7 copy, this is a Chimera with the platinum booklet inside. As well as the second CD, but none of this is my fault this time. I think it's my big PS1 case that suffered the most. Both sides come off and only the first and fourth CDs are staying still. What a waste. At least I have the Switch version if I need to play it, as well as a digital copy of the original version on my PS3 like FF6. I don't have a physical copy of this game nor of 10.2 because I have them on Steam with the HD remaster compilation. But I have the original official guide I bought the same day as my first PS2 copy. It's not in pristine condition because I flipped through its pages so many times and I'm still using it since FF10 in its European version is identical to the one in the HD remaster compilation. The only problem, if you can call it as such, is that there isn't a full list of every combinations for Riku's Limit Break, just the most important ones, and an invitation to check their website. That might not even exist anymore, I haven't tried. For FF10 2, I used to own the official guide, but I lost it somewhere. I have no clue when or how, but I never found it, which is frankly sad. Even if the HD remaster version of 10.2 has many adjustments or some content added, I'm really frustrated about not knowing what happened to my guidebook copy. I have absolutely no physical stuff regarding this game. I bought the Seekers of Adulin edition on Steam, but again for lack of money reasons, I don't plan on getting any PS2 or PC copy, either the base game or the expansions, as I wouldn't be able to use them anyway. Just like FF3 on DS, it's in my really not a priority folder. 
This one is actually the only original copy I kept after buying it during the month of the game's release. And I can even say that it was bundled with a PS2, so there is no barcode. And I still have that slim PS2 with its original controller. The controller might not work, but the console itself still does. Oh, and I also bought on the same day an official guide that I still own. FF12 is one of the episodes I hate the most, yet I kept everything. <sighs> I must be a masochist, I don't see any other explanation. Bought on the internet for a reasonable price, there was the instruction booklet inside. And I have nothing more to add. During the week of release, I bought the game on PS3 with the official guide. I still have the guide, but not the game's copy. However, I do have the Steam version that's infamously buggy, although not as horribly as 13.2 that is truly one of the worst ports. And the first person I hear say, there are mods for it, he can sincerely go fuck himself, because whenever there's just a slight change in Steam's registry, I have to jump through a bunch of hoops to make the game work almost correctly. The customers are not the ones who have to fix a company's mistakes. If you go to a restaurant to order a steak with a side of french fries, and you get served an unpeeled potato with a steak that's barely cooked, as well as spoiled mayonnaise, it's not the job of a random passerby in the street to finish cooking your steak and prepare your fries, damn it! Sorry, let's get to the next game. I have 13.2 on Steam as well, and as you understood, it's really not a good experience. Which saddens me even more because the port of Lightning Returns works like a charm. I never had any issue or crashing whatsoever, it's great, save for one detail that kinda forced me to buy a PS3 copy. For some unknown reason, the garb, the weapon and the shield of Aerith aren't in the Steam version. Their abilities and effects are still in the data, but the models were deleted. Considering that this port was released quite some time ago already, and nobody made a mod or an attempt at restoring that, I felt like I had to buy the PS3 version, then the Aerith DLC in case I have to cover it in my videos. I strongly advise against buying the Steam version like me, go for the non-Steam PC version. Because if Steam doesn't work for some reason, it will impact FF14's performances and even prevent you from starting the game. Although I don't have a copy of the game, I still have one of the Blu-ray soundtrack and the first encyclopedia. And no, I haven't even read a fifth of it, but I'd like to buy the second volume someday. I bought a PS4 physical copy of the original version in 2022 with the goal of maybe covering some of the differences with the Windows edition I have on Steam. I remember seeing a used copy of the official guidebook many years ago, but since I didn't have a PS4 back then, I didn't care. I feel like I should regret my decision… maybe? However, it's not annoying me as much as that FF4 PSP Collector's Edition. The same day I found the Advent Children DVD and Blu-ray, I also found a Blu-ray of King's Glaive and the Collector's Edition DVD of the movie The Spirits Within. It's not the copy I bought two decades ago, but it's the same Collector's Edition which really surprised me, so I decided to buy it as well. No, I'm not done yet, I still have the other spin-offs to talk about. Theater Rhythm Curtain Call on 3DS, I think I bought it new in a store, so it's like my FF12 copy, but more recent. 
And I'll segue into my DS copy of Chocobo Tales because I only bought the cartridge and I'm keeping it inside Curtain Cole's box to not lose it. I acquired this game through the internet once again and I streamed my first few hours of gameplay... two years ago already? The CD works well, the box is in really good condition and fortunately there's the instruction booklet. Regarding the PSP, I have both Dissidia games. I barely played Geodesim which is a prequel, but I finished the main story of the first game. I have Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions as well. Like Dissidia, it's not the copy I bought back when the game was released, but this one is at least complete with a collector's card, that doesn't serve any actual purpose, and I didn't have to sell a kidney to acquire it. Lastly, I have the Final Fantasy Type-0 manga, Icy Blade of Death, which sounds edgier than the French subtitle, The Warrior with the Sword of Ice. It's a prequel telling the story of the Zero Class Cadet's instructor, Kurasame Susaya, nine years before the game's events. It's rather good, but absolutely not mandatory to understand the game's plot that I have on Steam. And I'm not interested by any physical copy, whether the original Japanese exclusive PSP version or the HD remaster port on a more recent console. I have other games, including ones made by Squaresoft, but that will be for another day if people are interested. With this, I hope you have a good day or night, Prenez soin de vous et amusez-vous bien.